A bunch of people showed up dead in their homes with their blood completely drained around New Iberia in 1912. Several people were arrested as suspects over the months, but were released due to insufficient evidence to convict. All the while, bodies continued to pile up. Vampire rumors began to surface around the community as also coincided with Bram Stoker's Dracula, but the citizens soon enlisted the help of an unlikely duo. A popular Catholic priest, Father Henry Jaunt, and his longtime friend, voodoo priest named Moses Amashan, answered their call for help. Their hunt led them to the town of Cheneyville, Louisiana, where they believed the killer frequented. He was thought to be a rail station employee due to the broad distances of the killings. They posed in disguises and monitored the employees coming and going throughout their workday until they saw a strange individual. He was ghostly pale with fire ginger hair and blue eyes, and while his clothing was pristine, there was a particular accessory on his shirt, blood droplets. The story goes that the priests confronted the man and a fight would ensue, with the priest gaining the upper hand and forcing the great value version of Ed Sheeran to spill the beans on his boss. As it turned out, this vampire had buku minions. It seemed that on their quest to learn the identity of this murderer, several of his minions were killed at the hands of the priests. Finally, after several days, one of these minions revealed his master's whereabouts and his name, Auguste de la Grange. The next night, they made their way to a small and isolated shack in the middle of the woods. Unfortunately, the voodoo priest Moses Amashan was bound to a wheelchair due to a deteriorating medical condition and could no longer continue the journey. Father Henry Jean had to go into the vampire's lair alone. And at last, Jean reached Delagrange's cabin and noticed the lights were turned off. He couldn't see anything inside and he just walked in, but fortunately for Jean, Auguste Delagrange was found sleeping on a cot, presumably weak from lack of feeding. Jean took a wooden stake and drove it straight into the heart of the beast. Jean claims that Delagrange didn't make a sound, only opened his eyes wide and stared into the face of the priest before fading into hell. After the death of Delagrange, the killing stopped and the town went back to peace. Auguste Delagrange was believed to have murdered more than 40 people before he was staked by the priest. Today, his skeletal remains can be seen on display at the Vampire Museum in New Orleans. A small wooden box is said to contain the vampire's heart along with the wooden stake that killed him it was auctioned off on eBay in the early 2000s for around $250. You can find it online still. Is this story true or a mere work of Creole fiction? Based on my research, unfortunately this story, or at least the vampire heart is false. The heart seems to be an elaborate prop made of beef jerky that's covered in a coat of wax. So actually it could be tasty depending on if it's teriyaki flavored or not if you take the wax off first. But here at Louisiana Dread, vampires are very real and Mr. De La Grange needs his heart back. Take a trip to the Vampire Museum on your next trip to New Orleans and be sure to follow us at Louisiana Dread.